Hello, and welcome to the Love Your Work Life podcast. I'm your host, Elisa Shuck. Whether you're going for that next promotion, looking for a job, or making a career pivot, I'll teach you how to navigate it all so you can have the career you want. This is Love Your Work Life, episode one, two, three. It is the unofficial end of summer. We're in early September. Now here in Arizona, you wouldn't know that summer is supposed to be over yet because we're supposed to have record highs or extreme heat or whatever it is. The little notification thingy on my computer says hot. (laughs) So yes, it's still hot, but I'm ready. I'm so ready for cooler temps, being able to hang out outside and enjoy just fall coming. And this time of year is also back to school time. Back when I was in retail, I worked in the children's shoes industry, both on the retail and wholesale side of things. And yeah, the the weeks leading up to this were insanity. It was really our holiday season, if you want to think about it like that. That's what we experienced (laughs) in the weeks preceding school. But today's episode isn't about the adventures of the children's shoes industry. It is a little bit about the adventures of childhood because I want to talk about paradigms today. And I want to talk about how paradigms that you developed as a kid going through school might actually be still active, quite active, and actually be influencing and controlling the results that you're getting in your life right now. That's why I have titled this episode, The Report Card Paradigm. Paradigms are ideas that have been programmed into our subconscious mental programs that have almost exclusive control over our habitual behavior. And I know you're thinking, how is it that what happened to me as a child going through school is still in play right now. And I'm excited to share it because it was kind of a weird epiphany for me even this week at how report cards are still controlling our behavior and our own ideas about ourselves. So when we think of a paradigm, as I said, it's ideas that have been programmed into us. It's this multitude of fixed concepts that are controlling our behavior. Our paradigms aren't developed um, in one shot. It is this continual conditioning that we've experienced over and over again. Unfortunately, a lot of this conditioning doesn't serve us really well. Report cards being one of them. Think about your childhood. Think about your education. Think about the conditioning that happened over the course of time, specifically as it relates to report cards. These measurements about how much we know at a given time about a specific subject. That's all they were. A test that you took and the grade that you got on that test was simply a measurement of information in your brain at that particular moment in time. Yet, how many of us developed our self-concept based on report cards. Did you get a C? Did you get an A? Did you fail? What were the consequences of A's, C's, or failures? 
This is the kind of conditioning that we've had. And it continues to be in play in our current behavior patterns because it's a paradigm and paradigms live in our subconscious mind. And until we make a conscious decision, an intellectual decision to reject certain thoughts, to reject certain concepts that we've been exposed to or continue to be exposed to, then the paradigm is going to live in there unchanged and affecting our emotions and affecting our results. What we are willing to pursue. The reason this is important to pay attention to is because our paradigms ultimately guide our behavior and the actions that we take, which then becomes the results we experience in our life. If you have a paradigm that says, I'll never be good enough. That conditioning of it's never good enough has now become a habitual thought pattern and emotional experience. And therefore, you might not apply to the jobs because eh, I'm probably not good enough. Even if you ticked every box on that job description in that job post, The nagging feeling, I'm probably not good enough, is the paradigm that's guiding your actions, that's guiding your behavior, which means you'll probably self-edit and not apply for that job or go for that promotion. Those report cards, think about them. How much of your own ideas about yourself are attached to report cards. Here's the deal. Because paradigms control your emotions, then your thoughts as well as your actions and results will always be in harmony with that paradigm. Your subconscious mind doesn't know the difference between something that is imagined and reality. So you've got to identify the paradigms that aren't serving you anymore and change them. And how do you change them? You change them the same way they were created through repetition, through reconditioning and rewiring your brain to deciding that a momentary letter on a piece of paper doesn't define who you were then, who you are now, or who you can be in your future. What I want you to try is identifying the result you want. Maybe it's a new job. Maybe it's the promotion. Maybe it's helping your team elevate to new levels of output and performance and just happiness with each other. Identify that result. Now, notice, are you taking actions that will help you achieve that result. Because you can listen to this podcast, you can read a lot of books, and intellectually you know, wow, this could, this will work. But the reason you're not taking action on what you are putting in intellectually is the paradigm that sits between actions and thoughts. So let's get practical. How do you change the paradigm? How do you change that emotional state, that subconscious self-concept that's keeping you stuck where you are? You do it the same way 
that was happening to you all those years of report cards, but instead of allowing other people's thoughts about you to reinforce a paradigm, you consciously choose your own thoughts about you. Your conscious mind has the ability to accept or reject information. Now you get to be intentional about the information that you put in and change the paradigm through better thoughts, through deliberate thinking and choosing what you want to feed into that subconscious that you didn't have a choice of when you were young and you were being conditioned by report cards. And the caveat to all this is, it's not just choosing the thoughts one time. It's choosing them over and over and over again and reconditioning your mind With this new information, the information, the thoughts you are deliberately choosing, just like those darn report cards and the subtle and not so subtle messages that came along with those report cards of how valuable you were or not, of how worthy you were or not, conditioned you for the paradigm that you're living right now. You are not your report card, my friend. If you're like I was and had report cards that were straight A's that got you stressed out starting in sixth grade and falling into people-pleasing behavior, or if you're someone who had average report cards and you started to think you were an average person with not much potential or opportunities to advance and create and move forward. None of it is true. Stop living in paradigms that aren't of your own making. Start paying attention and changing the paradigms so that you can do all of the things and create all of the results that are rolling around in that brain of yours. So your assignment for today is to write out 10 new thoughts in present tense that describe the person that you want to be. I love the way Bob Proctor put it. He always suggested starting out every new thought with, I am so happy and grateful now that I. What could you add after that? I am so happy and grateful now that I have a new job that values me for what I am and allows me to contribute at my highest level. I am so happy and grateful now that I have a self-image that truly aligns with who I know myself to be. I am so happy and grateful now that I have a team that works together cohesively, that collaborates, that is achieving their full potential on a daily basis and elevating the results that we're delivering to our company. My friends, when you craft thoughts like this and you look at them every day, even multiple times a day, you are planting those new seeds into your subconscious. When you read the thought and you actually feel happiness and gratitude inside and the sense of success and celebration and accomplishment that comes along with that, you're creating that emotional state that doesn't know it's not fully expressed 
in your reality yet. And that's okay. Because the more those thoughts become your new paradigm, it all starts clicking. Trust me, this works. I've used these techniques of managing my thoughts over and over again, even when I didn't really understand the power that they have. You can disrupt unintentional thinking. You can uncover one unserving paradigm after another and change them one by one and live the kind of work life that you want. Super exciting. Go for it. And of course, follow me on LinkedIn if you're not already. Message me. I respond to all of the DMs that come to me. I would love to hear about the report card paradigm that you're kicking to the curb so that it doesn't hold you back anymore. All right, my friends, talk to you soon. If you like this podcast, I invite you to visit the Love Your Work Life website at elisashuck-careercoach.com. On the site, you'll find all the information you need to work with me one-on-one, as well as get access to my courses, Job Search Field Guide, and The Art of Stellar Interviews. I can't wait to help. I look forward to seeing you there.